Next, uh, living truth. Live the truth. Okay. We have doing the... Like I said, this is going to be a long study, but... The work of the truth, we had standing for truth, we had obeying the truth. You have to obey the truth. You have to come to it believing that it's the Word of God. It's absolute truth. It's perfect, without error, and you're going to obey it. God commands you, you obey. Okay. Just reiterating everything we went over. And then stand for the truth. You do the work of the truth, and when you start doing the work of the truth, you start learning what all the truth is, and God starts opening this book to you, so then you can stand for the truth. And now we're on live. We talked about this already. Live for the truth. Now as we've gone all through here, the helmet of salvation, I didn't really mention this that much, but remember what we talked about when you let wolves in sheep's clothing come in, and they can really mess up your life, because you're not girding up your loins with truth. That helmet of salvation is salvation in this life. Okay, you take that helmet off, they can just kill you in one shot, right here between the eyes, right in the forehead. You get hit in the head. There's no, in history, there's a lot of people that have died because they've fallen down and hit their head against something and it's killed them. Someone's taken a bat and just hit them over the head. Even just one good hit can kill you on the head. Okay, salvation in this life. If you're not growing up your loins with truth, and you're allowing the enemy to come in, you're allowing lies to come in, you start putting down the wrong, the right sword for the wrong sword. All these, I don't think, I don't know if show, but all these books that talk about down here, the NIV, the NIV, you start getting rid of the real sword, uh, then that helmet you go to take a, a, cu a couple of steps and you're going to fall and that helmet's going to go flying off. You can't walk. You can't walk in the right direction if you're not girding up your loins with truth. Okay? We talked about the shield of faith, the sword. The one thing we haven't really mentioned is the breastplate of righteousness, but we have because it talks, we keep talking about you're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. It starts with Jesus, ends with Jesus. You're in Christ Jesus, Jesus is in you. He comes and commands you and tells you what to do. That's what's putting on the breast. Uh, just summary, but we're going to get into it when we get to that. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness is Jesus comes into your life and he takes over and he tells you what to do. You start living according to Jesus Christ. He commands, you obey. When you have that breastplate of righteousness on, it's because Jesus is commanding you and you're obeying. And we've talked about that. Girding up your loins with truth. How do you know the truth? What commands are coming from Jesus Christ and what commands are coming from the world if you're not girding up your loins with truth? So now we're going to talk about living for truth. Just a few verses on living for truth. 3 John chapter 1, verse 3. For I rejoiced greatly when the breath, brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee. Even as thou walkest in truth, I have no greater joy that, to hear that my children Walk in truth. If you don't gird up your loins with truth, you're not going to be able to walk. Okay? That's the way the Bible's trying to portray it. If you don't, if you, like I showed you the picture, the guy's just walking. If you try running in that robe, you're going to fall flat on your face. And if you try to pick up something like a heavy log or a boulder, you're trying to do work with that, you try to bend down, you, you, you're going to have the hardest time and you're going to fall all over the place. Okay, Walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Gird up your loins with truth. That's how you're going to be able to walk in truth. you got to study the Word of God. you got to apply it to your life. And you got to live it. you got to hide it in your heart. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. We've already mentioned that verse before, but I'm going to do it again, because it talks about walking. When you're living the truth, it's a walk. It's not a talk. It's a walk. People always keep grabbing the should, should, should. Uh, Luke 9.23 reads, and he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That we should walk in them. Absolutely. But I've said this before. 
We are still going to fail. That's what the should's there. I don't focus on the should. I focus on the unto good works. I'm supposed to be doing good works. I'm supposed to be obeying God and obeying His commands. And when I fail God, when the should applies, that when you go to Luke 9.23, you know, He said, If a man come after me, let him deny himself, that's repent, take up his cross daily, forsake, and follow me. Get back to your work, walk with the Lord, and serve in the Lord in your day-to-day -day life. Get back to where you left off. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I do not, nor will I ever teach a sinless perfection. Like when you get saved, you're not capable of sin anymore. And if you sin, you were never saved to begin with. Or, you're, or you lose your salvation. I have never taught that. That's the enemies. That's, that's where the whispering comes in and the backbiting, the lies, the gossip. Okay? I'm still a sinner, saved by God's grace. But I have the understanding that I'm supposed to sin as little as possible. My attitude towards sin is I'm supposed to hate sin. What the Bible says is sin, not what the world says is sin. Not your feelings and your opinions, but what the Bible says is sin. I'm supposed to hate sin. I'm supposed to hate evil. Mm -hmm. But I'm supposed to have that attitude that when I do fall, I need to repent forsake and get back to my walk with the Lord. So do you, brothers and sisters of Christ. When you are girding up your loins and you realize that you forgot to gird up your loins one morning, you get up and you, f you get tempted, you fall into temptation, then you choose to sin and you fall flat on your face because you got up. Because you're not pay I'm just thinking this as an example. Just imagine this. You get up and you're all excited and you just take off running and whoosh, face plant right on the ground. And you look down and it's like, oh, I forgot to gird up my loins. That's what I'm talking about. You get up, and you, before, without knowing it, you start getting tempted. You don't know why you're getting tempted. And the next thing you know, you choose to sin, and you fail God, and you fall flat on your face. You look back. I forgot to gird up my loins with truth. I didn't start my day reading the Bible. I didn't end my day reading the Bible. I didn't do a Bible study in three or four days. When's the last time I went through my house and, and just walked through the house and talked with the Lord and said, Is there anything I have that's wicked that needs to go? You know, it's just, you realize you forget to gird up your loins with truth. I've never taught that you have to be sinlessly perfect. Don't fall for that. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5.17 reads, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. The number one thing that comes new is your attitude towards God's word. This is the big thing. But your attitude towards sin, you hate sin. Why? Because sin doesn't please God. The Bible says they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When you were lost, you could not please God because you were carnally minded, walking after the flesh. But now that you're saved, you are spiritually minded, walking after the spirit. You can please God. But when you fail to please God, it eats at you. You hate it. Your attitude toward it, you just get miserable and you just get, oh, Lord, I'm just worthless, Lord. That act that you did was worthless. You just lost some rewards, that sin. But you're not overall worthless, but you have that feeling. Okay? You have to live the truth. That means you've got to struggle with the flesh. You've got to struggle with temptation to the day you die. Or until God catches us up. But it's not just in word. But it's indeed. Remember that, brothers and sisters in Christ. When you find yourself choosing to sin, or that you've backslidden, uh, trying to resurrect the old man or the old woman, stop and go, you know what? I'm going to stop everything, and I'm going to do a Bible study. I'm going to start praying. I'm going to go for a walk and start talking with the Lord and pray and say, Lord, I'm starting to fail you. I'm starting to backslide. The temptations are coming. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Word of God. Start girding up that loins with truth. You can gird up the loins with truth and go for a walk and talk with the Lord. You can gird up your loins with truth and start reading the Bible. You can gird up your loins with truth and do a Bible study. Start praying, asking for prayer requests. Okay? So you live for truth when you gird up your loins. What else do you do when you gird up your loins? Well, we talked a little bit about it, but you battle for truth. John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Matthew 13, 18 says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and casteth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that receiveth the seed in the stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he no, not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become unfruitful. Verse 23, But he that receiveth seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. I love how the word of God compares to each other. Notice how it says that heareth the word and understandeth it. He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye hear them not because ye are not of God. Okay. Understand it. But there's a battle going on. The battle is, we're trying to preach the word of God, and Satan, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The battle is this. There's two fronts. The first front is your life. You get saved, the battle starts where you're going to have the whole world that it's going to be tempting you, and your flesh is going to be tempting you, Everything outside this house. When I go into town, there's nothing but temptation. Okay, that's the first front. The second front is the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, we go out there and try to preach the plan of salvation, and we try to preach the word to people. And there's people out there that that we call we use the word servant of Satan. Yes, we wrestle against flesh and blood. We're not necessarily attacking them personally, like physically getting up and attacking him, but we say they're servants of Satan who come behind us and try to say, wait, he, he's teaching a false gospel. You know, that, that King James Bible, that's not really the perfect written word of God. You can use any Bible you want. Oh, there doesn't have to be a changed life. You can live in sin. It's no big deal. Sin's not that big of a deal. And you've got people that try to snatch that word away that we're preaching. There's a battle going on. That's the battle, brothers and sisters in Christ. I... I came across a guy that it seemed like he, he, he complimented me on my uh, gospel magnet on my truck. And then when he asked me where I uh, worship, I said, I worship at home. And he said, what about Hebrew such and such? And I'm, uh, I can't, because I can't remember the exact address, but not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And I said, uh, who's that written to? And before I could get it out, before I could even get the you part out, he cut me off and said, the church. In other words, someone's already corrected them on it before. And that's stubbornness. It's like, someone tried to keep telling the truth, but then somebody else came along and taught him lies. And now he's holding hold hardcore to the lie. There's a battle going on. I said, I'm not a Hebrew. The Bible, uh, Hebrews talks about works. You have to endure to the end. I don't have to endure to the end. All right? To be saved. But that guy wasn't going to listen. There's a battle going on out there. Like I told you before, uh, uh, earlier, when you go out to preach the gospel, how many of you go out there that you go out to do something, you go to hand out a gospel tract or to tell someone about Jesus, they, they're like, I already know who Jesus is. And you look at them, it's like, their Jesus lines up with the Antichrist of the King James Bible. Someone's already perverted their heart. And it's so hard to reach those people with the real Jesus Christ. You know? It, there's a battle going on. Okay? The battle for truth. Jesus Christ and His Word. Okay. Um, gosh, it's just, there's so many times where I've talked to people about sin, and I've talked to people about the Word of God on YouTube, or whether it's in person, and it seemed like uh, there was a guy that came by and he got so excited when I started telling him about the Bible version issue, about, you know, Texas Receptus and the Nestle's of Lawn and, you know, how the King James Bible comes from the Texas Receptus. It's based off, the King James Bible is based off of over 99% at this point, 
of uh, all Greek extant manuscripts and all the other Bible perversions are based off less than 1%. And they go off the Nestle's lawn and the Texas... And I'm explaining to them all the stuff. He got really excited. I gave him a couple books on the Bible version issue. And he drove off. And it's like maybe a week later or two weeks later, I saw him and he was so excited to talk to me. Yeah, I've been looking into this and this. And then uh, I think it was like another week later when I saw him, he just, he kind of drove by, kind of looked at me and just went, I mean, this is a guy who would have stopped before the first two weeks. What happened? I believe somebody got to him and perverted what I taught him. The Bible version, oh, don't listen to him. It's not that big. Don't let, and he's part of this Babel building system and everything, and they corrupt him. That will happen. Came around and snatched the truth. I gave him truth, and someone came around and snatched it from him and gave him lies. Okay. 2 Timothy 4.3 For the time will come while they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. What's the number one reason why people don't, can have truth taken from them like that? They're sin for a season. They're all about the flesh. Carly minded walking after the flesh. It says right here, But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. People love fables. Fables are all about the flesh. You can keep your sin. It's not that big of a deal. They love it. Fantasy. Fables. They don't like the truth. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What does it say there in 2 Timothy 4.3? It said, But after their own lusts, so they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. It's wickedness. They get into wickedness and sin, and they get told, well, if you come, if you come to my building, I preach easy believism. All you have to do is just believe in your head, you're, and you're saved. You continue living however you want to live. You can sin all you want. And we've got these great programs that's all about the flesh, and elevating the flesh, and worshiping the flesh. And it's just, it's, we have a great time here. Yeah. 2 Thessalonians 2.1 says, Now we beseech you, 2 Thessalonians 2.1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind. You're girding up your loins with truth, hiding it in your heart. So it's not just in your head, but it's also in your heart. But here it talks about the mind, not shoot shaken in mind, or be troubled. Now you have your, have your heart troubled. Neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. Remember, when you're battling for truth, and you get so fatigued, and you get so weary, because we do at times, brothers and sisters Christ, remember, keep that blessed hope. The day of Christ is at hand. Jesus could come back any day now. Verse 3, that's our hope. That's what keeps us going every day. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son, revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalting himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Falling away first. Don't be discouraged. Right now we're seeing brethren that were like, I thought he was saved. He could have been, he could still be saved. That brother or sister Christ could still be saved, but they've fallen away. They've been spoiled by philosophy and vain deceit. The Bible talks about how people will try to resurrect the old man. That's why we're warned not to resurrect the old man or the old woman. They make a mess of their life. We're seeing a lot of false converts come to light, and we're seeing some brethren fall away. Okay. When it talks about the um so, uh, the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition the, the great deception that I believe is is that the world Satan is getting the world ready to accept the Antichrist as Jesus Christ right now I told you there's so many versions of Jesus Christ out there who's to say which the with, who's to say who the real Jesus Christ is we are we have a perfect standard but they're out there saying who's to say who the real Jesus Christ is so when the Antichrist comes, he's going to be a little bit of all this Jesus, this false Jesus that's being preached, and all these false religions. 
Okay? He's going to be their Jesus to every single one of them. That's the great deception today. Okay? The, the great deception is getting you to believe that you're a Christian when you're lost and on your way to hell. You say, well, how does that work? You believe in a false Jesus. You follow a false gospel. Easy believism. Faith alone. The Bible doesn't teach faith alone. It says uh, we are saved by God's grace. It says that plenty of times throughout the Bible that it's God's grace that saves you. But how do you find God's grace? You go through faith. So they don't follow the plan of salvation and they get talked into worshiping a Satan, basically. I'm just going to say it. Satan as Jesus Christ. He poses as a Jesus Christ. He's a counterfeit. And they worship him. It's great deception. People believe that they're Christians and they're not. And they're the hardest people to try to reach for Jesus Christ. Those are those people I'm talking about. You go to them and they've already got this preconceived idea of who Jesus is and who what Christianity is because they've been lied to. Bad seeds have been sown. You know, we have the tares. I know this has to do with the Millennial Kingdom, but the tares and the wheats. I mean, you got bad seeds have been sown. And we have to go and pull those bad seeds out and, and try to plant good seeds. It's not easy. It's, it's very hard to reach someone who, who professes to be saved that they're not. They don't line up with Scripture. 2 Peter 2.22 says, But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed in her walling in the mire. Now the Bible talks about, I don't think I have it here, but it talks about they promised them liberty. Because um, that's a good one. Here it is, 2 Peter 2.19. It's just shortly before this one. But 2 Peter 2.19, While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for whom of a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. Okay? The dog returns to his own vomit. The sow to her wallowing in the mire again. Okay? You have saved people that are falling away and they're going back to trying to resurrect the old man, the old woman. But the whole point here with this verse here, it talks about they promise them liberty. You can go to heaven when you die. Just believe in this Jesus that I, I'm preaching. It doesn't line up with scripture as the real Jesus, but just believe in this Jesus and you can go to heaven when you die. Promising liberty from the law of sin and death. But what happens is they're still brought into the same bondage. They are still held accountable to the law of death. Sin and death. They're being lied to. Okay? They're still brought in bondage to the flesh. The law of sin and death. If you look that up, uh, in Romans 8, I think it is, talks about the law of sin and death. Because the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Okay, the law of God is another way of saying the law of the spirit of life which is in Christ Jesus. You have the law of God and you have the law of the sin and death. You can only be under one of them, not both. And they're being promised that they can be under both. And this whole easy believism and this faith alone, it's all about saying you can be under both. You can't. You're either under the law of sin and death or you're under the law of God. The spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You're either carnally minded and walking after the flesh, or you're spiritually minded walking after the spirit. You're not both. Okay? There's a battle going on. And it's tough, brothers and sisters in Christ, but you've got to gird up your loins every day. You fail to gird up your loins, uh, you get up to start walking, and you're going to fall flat on your face. It happens every time. I can testify to it. I've fallen since I got saved... Five years now, uh, a little bit after, a little over six, I've fallen flat on my face a lot because I keep forgetting to gird my loins every morning. Start my day with the Lord, start uh, reading the Bible, pray about that day, kind of plan ahead a little bit what I'm going to talk, do, and, and whatnot. I mean, you, you don't know exactly what's going to happen every day, but you know what I'm saying. Gird up your loins and make sure that Jesus is, you start your day with Jesus and you end your day with Jesus. Remember, He's the foundation, He's the head. You're in Christ Jesus, He's in you. It starts with Jesus, it ends with Jesus. He's everything. Okay? He's supposed to be everything to you. Also, in 2 Peter 
2.22 when it says that the dog is returned to his own vomit again. Proverbs 26.11 is where it says that, when it says the true proverb. It's Proverbs 26.11 that says, As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. As the Bible says, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. There's times where your actions can say there is no God. Not that you don't believe that there's, a, there's no God, but your actions say that there's no God. Okay? A fool returneth to his folly. 2 Timothy 4.1 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, saved and lost. In other words, say that, way to say that. Who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come will they not, not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. See how we went through a lot of these verses already? Verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Here's the warning. Watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of the evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. This is where you got to prove yourself. You got your, uh, are you girding up your loins with truth? How do you know if someone's girding up their loins with truth? Look at the life they're living. So a man's in ministry, if he's curling up his loins with truth, look at his ministry. Does it line up with the Word of God? Okay. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. This is Paul speaking. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Judgment seat of Christ. This is the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Okay? Judgment seat of Christ is for saved. Great white throne is for lost. We say the great white throne, but it's the, it says great white throne and you're going to be judged. So that's why we call it the great white throne judgment. Because it, that's what it says in, in Revelation. Okay, So no matter who, if you're saved or lost, you do not get out of being judged. You still will be judged. But he's going to get a reward. Okay, our works are going to be burned up. So give me at that day, but not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Once again, brothers and sisters Christ, if you start getting down, prayer, fellowship, emailing, uh, you can email, you can Skype, do your Bible studies, go for a walk and talk with the Lord, but the biggest thing that's supposed to give us hope, but we love his appearing. This is evidence right here that I use that when you look for Jesus Christ, it's not just you sit there. I do it, Lord. Sorry. I do it looking for the Lord in the clouds. But brother and sister Christ, I do do it. I sit out there and I look at the clouds. I look at the sky sometimes. But that's not what this is talking about when it says, but unto all them that love is appearing. Okay? A crown of righteousness. It says, I fought the good fight. Paul talks about how he fights his flesh, and my flesh dwelleth no good thing. The fight with his flesh, the fight with the world, okay? And he even, fight, he even had some contention with brethren, okay? He fought the good fight. It's talking about the changed life. But unto all them that love his appearing, when you're looking for Jesus Christ to come back today, you're going to sanctification. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. I want to please the Lord. Lord, what's pleasing to you? Lord, I want to be in ministry. I want to be used more of you. I want to do more work for you. I'm going to battle for you. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to live for you. It's a lifelong thing. It's works. It's action. It's deed. That's what it means to look for Jesus Christ but unto them that also love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me. You're going to have people forsake you. Having loved this present world. He took his eyes off Jesus, and loving Jesus' appearing, and put it on the world. And what happened? He went into the world. 
and is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia, there's another person that departed. Uh, now, the Cre uh, Crescens to Galatia doesn't mean that they were the same as um, Demas. I don't know how you pronounce it, Mount Demas or Demas. Um, the, not saying they're the same, it's just saying he's departed. Because right here it says Titus unto Demetia. He's saying I had to send him here to do the work of the Lord. I had to send him here to work. This person left me for the world. He just departed and gave up. You know, and when you start living for the Lord throughout your life, you're going to see brethren fall away. You're going to see false converts. And you're going to see brethren that stand their ground. Okay, you're going to see all three. Titus unto Dal Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Towards the end of Paul's ministry, it just seemed like there was fewer and fewer of men to do the work. People are falling away. And that was then. Okay, when you start out, it's going to probably be strong. There's a lot of us brethren and everything. And you're going out there to fight the good fight. You're, you know, you've got your loins girt about with truth. And you're getting out there to start doing the work, the labor, or fighting for the Lord. And you're just going to see so much in your life as time goes. I, I was talking to a brother in Christ. I know i got to wrap this up. This will probably be like a two or three parter. But brother and sister Christ, I love the word of God and I know you do too. I was talking with a brother in Christ and it says, it just feels like every year that I've been saved feels like 10 years. It's like being 10, 10 years of being lost, you know? you know. And when I was lost, time went by so fast and it was just wasting time and, and so fleshly and sin for a season. But it's just, the whole point is, is I've been saved for five years, but it feels like I'm at 50. I've been saved for 50. It just, I feel so old as a Christian. And... These days, brother and sister Christ, you got to keep fighting the good fight. you got to make sure that you're girding up your loins with truth. And you're putting on the whole armor of God. And make sure that you prove that you're girding up your loins with truth. And you make sure other people prove to you. You make sure they're approved. Okay, you need to approve people. Right? They need to prove themselves and they need to be approved. Don't get deceived by false converts. Okay, don't get deceived by this world. Don't be like that uh, uh, Demas, who hath forsaken me, having loved, loved this present world. So in closing, we're going to close real quick. Remember that... Let's see if I can go before we get this... Okay, Just go over the key points because this was a long study. GERD is an action. That's the whole point to get from this study. Whether you think it's a belt and you really want that belt, you don't want it to be a belt, or they're wearing the robes and they're girding it up, because I believe it's they're girding it up because you hooked the sword to what you've girded up. Okay. Remember, it's an action. Some people say, well, I'm always wearing my belt. No, you've got to get up and you've got to make sure to put it on all the time. Okay, every day you're girding up your loins. It's an action. Okay. And as we went through this, we talked about obeying the truth. You have to be obedient to the truth. When you gird up your loins to be a soldier for Jesus Christ, He's going to give you the truth, He's going to give you the commands, and you've got to obey Him. And once you have that heartfelt, I belong to Jesus Christ, He owns me, He commands me, He says, take my yoke upon you, my burden is easy. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Okay. Then you can start doing the work of truth. God starts working truth in your life. He starts cleaning up your life. You start having a changed life. Okay. Then after you start having a changed life, you can start standing for the truth. You start making some stands in your life. Okay. The outward showing stands for the Lord. That's between you and the Lord. You make stands. And that we're showing. And as you make stands for the Lord, that's when you're going to start battling for the Lord. Preaching the gospel, standing for truth, the life that you're living, people attack you. I, I think the number one attack I get is because of my changed life. When I got saved, I had a lot of people turn on me, family members, friends. They attacked the changed life. They had no problem that I was a Christian because today, Christian can mean anything. But they were really attacking the changed life. 
You can still be a Christian and do this. You can still be a Christian because of all the lies they were lied about. Uh, no, you can't. I'm going to live a life of Christ. I belong to Jesus Christ. My, I was created for thy pleasure. They are and were created. We were created to please God. That's supposed to be your goal. Okay. 2 Timothy 2.1 Thou therefore, son... Oh, sorry. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Remember that it's supposed to say, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I had to put in parentheses because I was making notes. It's like, are we to sin that grace may abound? Is that what it means by ha be strong in the grace? No. Be strong in the grace is the changed life. Let's keep reading. But it's, the Bible says, are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? But people will take this. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. That means I need to sin a lot so His grace can be strong and abound. No. Let's keep reading. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Endure hardness. There's a changed life. You're going to stick out. You're going to start going against the flow. You're going to start getting attacked. I'll say this real quick. When I was a false convert, I'm going to start out there. When I was a false convert, I was never attacked hardly at all for being a Christian, calling myself a Christian. Those I was part of the faith alone crowd. I was never attacked by the lost world, by atheists. I had friends of all types, Mormons, uh, Catholics, atheists. I mean, everybody thought I was a cool guy. I, was, I, wasn't hard, I wasn't attacked by hardly anybody. You know when I got attacked the most? A lot of you already know the answer. <laughs> when I truly got saved and born again. The changed life. That's when I got attacked. And now I get attacked so much. Okay. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. you got to gird up your loins and endure hardness. No man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he, may, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. There's the word please again. We're supposed to please God. And we're not supposed to entangle ourselves with the affairs of this life. Okay? You're supposed to provide for your own. We're supposed to work. If a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. I understand that. But we're to trust the Lord. Okay? God will take care of us. We're to take care of one another. We're supposed to be there for one another. Okay? Now, one thing that really pains me, because it's in closing, I've had to step down from the ministry because of the affairs of this life. Because of mistakes that I've made. Sometimes it's because of sin. I think when I first started, I did a couple of videos. I didn't really call it stepping down, but I took a break because I fell into sin. I'm sorry. I had a brother in Christ correct me. Sorry, brother. I fell into temptation, and I started getting into sin, and I had to get my life back right with the Lord. You know what I said about uh, the Bible says, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow Him. I had to get back to my walk with the Lord. I had to get back to living for Jesus Christ. Then I could get back to making some videos. But there's times where I've had, to I've had to step down from the ministry because of the affairs of this life. The affairs of this life can really mess you up if you let it. That's why you kept getting warned about it. God will provide for you. Be content with food and raiment. Okay, don't let money and finances overwhelm you. Don't make mistakes either where you're up here. You know, I understand some people are in debt and everything. God will work it out. God will help you. Be patient and trust Him. Mark 4.19 says, And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. Remember when we talked about the sower sowing the word? I had to throw this in there. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in, choke the word, and it become unfruitful. As a Christian, the cares of this world, because you just got warned about it, being a soldier for Jesus Christ, no man... That warth entangling himself with the affairs of this life, the cares of this world. Be careful. Don't get drawn into too much of this world. Like I said, I preach the gospel to people. If they want it, take it or leave it. I try to preach the Bible, the Word of God, to people. To you, brothers and sisters of Christ, 
take it or leave it. Okay, I'm not going to get entangled with all this backbiting, the whispering, uh, the affairs of this life. You know, if God says I have to live out of my truck, come next year if I'm living out of my truck, I'm living out of my truck. Okay, I'm not going to get, well, I've got to go get a good high paying job so I can get a big place and, you know, and then I have to get a big building and call that building a church and invite both saved and lost to it, which the Bible condemns and condemns building a building and calling it a church and treating it like a church, like a temp, pagan temple and everything and so forth. It's, you can get really entangled with the affairs of this life. That's what I, I I'm, I'm kind of going on, but... I, I love David Daniels, but I think what happened with David Daniels at Chick Publications is it became a business, and it became the affairs of this life, you know. Oh, we got to pay the bills, and we've got to keep this going, we've got to keep that going, so we got to just keep doing this, and then you start compromising here, and then compromising there, and it's become a business. It used to be about ministry. It used to be about, I'm serving the Lord, I don't care what the world says. If I go out of business because the world doesn't want you know, the, God, the true plan of salvation doesn't want the King James Bible as God's perfect word. It gets to the point where I'm out of business. I'm out of business. But I believe that he's compromised. You know, he's not enduring. Uh, I want to say it right. Hardness. He's not enduring hardness as a good soldier. He's compromising. Okay. And, you know, Peter Ruckman, he did some compromising. I pray that I... I have done compromising before in my life and it's screwed as a Christian and it, it's made a mess in my life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, stand, stand, stand. Gird up your loins so that you can walk and do the work for the Lord. Be strong in the grace of God. God saved me. I belong to Him and I need to be strong for Jesus Christ. People always say, well, you don't have any strength. No, I really don't. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. But it's His grace that gives me strength. He saved me. I'm going to live a life for Jesus Christ. So, we're going to go ahead and end this one here. Girding up your loins with truth. About with truth. Okay? Make sure you're surrounding yourself with truth. And remember everything that we talked about, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been a long study. And that's only one, praise the Lord. We've still got five other pieces I want to talk about. Of the armor of God. So, uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Keep up the good fight, keep up the good work, keep living for the Lord, keep praying for one another, you know, everything that we talked about, brothers and sisters in Christ. See you in the next video.